Nagy szeretettel köszöntöm a résztvevőket és a, a közvetítést online követő érdeklődőket is ezen a hát magyar tudomány ünnepe szempontjából lehet, hogy egy kicsit rendhagyó előadáson, hiszen akit ma itt köszönhetünk, az Gerard Muru professzor, 2018-as fizikai Nobel-díjas, és hát mivel Muru professzor angolul fogja tartani az előadását, ezért én is rögtön átváltok angol nyelvre. So welcome everyone, uh, thank you very much for uh, coming and for your interest, but most especially welcome Gerard to, uh, to, to Budapest and I hope you uh, will enjoy your stay in Hungary for the rest of it as well. Uh, just a couple of words about Professor Muru. Um, Professor Muru, as you all know, is the Nobel laureate of 2018 uh, Physics Prize. Uh, Professor Muru is a laser physicist. He did his uh, PhD in, uh, in France in the Pierre and Marie Curie University. And uh, very soon after that, uh, 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 Professor Muru moved to uh, the University of Rochester in the US, which is a, a very well-known place for uh, laser research. And uh, this is actually the place where uh, the, uh, the uh, noble idea, so to speak, was uh, developed, which is the uh, amplification of uh, laser pulses uh, with, uh, with, with a technology that is used widely uh, also nowadays uh, in, in many aspects uh, uh, of, of life and, and uh, technology. And uh, uh, after that, uh, there, uh, Professor Muru stayed at the uh, University of Michigan. And uh, uh, back in 2005, uh, he moved back to France to the Ecole Polytechnique. And uh, it was that time, I, I think, where the first idea of, uh, of uh, 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 constructing a European uh, laser user infrastructure was uh, conceived, and uh, this is the time actually when I when I first uh, met you uh, in in 2006-2007 when the uh, Eli preparatory phase project started, and uh, this has been of course a very successful project as you all know because the the evidence of success is existing in Seged uh, in the form of the Eli Alps facility. Uh, and uh, ever since, uh, Professor Muru has been very active and I, I think lots of interesting aspects of your uh, research uh, will, be, will be covered in this evening's talk. So with this, I thank you again for coming and uh, please give your talk. Okay. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you very much for these invitations. Uh, as you said, you know, I've been very well connected with the Hungarian uh, scientific community. Uh, you know, a lot of people, you know, uh, starting back in, um, in, uh, in Rochester, in fact. I think the first one was Tibor Juraz, uh, who was working as a postdoc in my group. But Tibor was very well connected with you guys. And uh, after I met, of course, uh, um, uh, Ferenc Kraus, that was uh, Ferenc, uh, was at, you know, when I was at, at the University of Michigan. And of course, you know, we know uh, that he's the prize winner of uh, the Nobel Prize winner of this, this year. So, Great. It was a great time. Uh, so I mean, I, I think also uh, Hungary played a big role in science, you know, because they were really very, you know, forward-looking when they selected, you know, uh, the Eli to be established, you know, at uh, the Ged also. Uh, and I remember I have read good memory about uh, all this, this time and so on. So, yeah, I mean, I very, you know, uh, Hungary is, I was, it's always this mysterious country, you know, you have all these very brilliant people, you know, uh, in music or in science, math and so on, 
who are coming from this country. And uh, it's a very special country for science. So I'm pleased to be here, you know, uh, today uh, to give these lectures. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you about something which in fact is very connected, very well connected with the Nobel Prize of this year, Nobel Prize, you know, because I'm going to talk about uh, extreme light. And extreme light, of course, is very, in it's very intense light. And, and you know that we, in order to produce intense light, you have basically two ways to do it. Either you, you are producing uh, light with a lot of energy or light with very short uh, durations. And, uh, and I spend my time, a my, uh, uh, lot of my careers and so on, trying to look for ways to, to shrink the pulse duration so I could get very high peak power and so on. Okay, so today, uh, first of all, I want to, to start my, uh, my lectures just uh, as, uh, as, as I always do by introducing my, um, my teammate and my, my student, teammate and so on, Donna Strickland. And um, it was with Donna that I shared the, no the 2018 Nobel Prize. And uh, she was a student. And I think for the, for, it's a very good example for a woman because she was a, she, of course, she was a, she's a, still a woman. <laughs> And, uh, and what was remarkable, hello, uh, what was remarkable with Donna is uh, that she, um, uh, her thesis work was the Nobel Prize. She got the Nobel Prize from her thesis work, you know. This is amazing, I don't know. And she had one paper, you know, going along with uh, his thesis work, and that was enough to get the Nobel Prize. So, uh, so sometimes he, he works very well, like this one. Okay, uh, it's not always like this, uh, you know. Very, in fact, but she was very active and so on, and so it was fantastic. But if she was, in fact, the Third woman to get the first third woman to get the prize. Okay, well, you had Marie Curie, and then you had Maya Gopermeyer, and 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 Donna. And this year, of course, I don't know, we have a new one, which is uh, Anne Lullier, a French also, uh, and uh, so it's very good time for, for the woman now, you know, uh, to get the prize. So it's very, uh, <clears throat> it's a good news. Okay. So um, I'm going to, as I say, I'm going to talk about uh, high intensity uh, lasers. And oh, by the way, yes, here I want, uh, I have this slide where I sh uh, we have the three Nobelists um, of this year. Peter Agostini, you know, uh, and Ferenc Krauss, of course, uh, nice, uh, nice, you know, very nice friend, and Anne really also a very nice friend, and uh, very good set of people, you know, very, very good set of people, and also connected with extremely short pulses. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> So um, why do I care about extreme light? Because it's extreme light, it's light which is absolutely fascinating because it's, it's, it's remarkable that it is with light that we can produce le, the largest peak power. It is with light that we can produce the largest temperature. It is with light that we can produce the largest pressure. 
it is with light that we can produce the largest accelerations and, of course, the largest field. And this is with light that we can do all these incredible things. And you will see applications of uh, what I, I'm just saying. Um, <clears throat> again. Okay, uh, also, I... <clears throat> Um, with this, this extreme light, uh, you know, we in, 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 in um, 2007, you know, we started to work on the concept on an extreme light infrastructure called ELI. Okay. And uh, this ELI uh, infrastructure is composed, in fact, of three, in fact, uh, infrastructures, which is located in Czech Republic, Hungary, Romania. And now they are really starting really to, to show some great result. I will mention some of them. So this is very nice. This is something that is, uh, we established with this, uh, this light and uh, this uh, infrastructures. Uh, uh, 15 years ago um, also. So, uh, <clears throat> now, let's talk about uh, um, the laser was invented, you know, in, uh, and demonstrated in um, in two or uh, sorry, 20, uh, 2000, really, in 2000, year 2000, by Ted Mehman, you know, a scientist from uh, a Californian lab, you know. Uh, and uh, so that was up, happened in 1960, okay? It happened in 1960. Uh, yeah, I hope I'm going to... Ah. You told me that I should use this, uh, this thing here. Oh. oh, I don't know let's see if I can do that. Yeah, maybe I can use it. So when the laser was invented in 1960, okay, the power of the laser were phenomenal because we were used, you know, to deal with incoherent light, okay? But for the first time in 1960, the, the light was coherent. So immediately, we could get higher peak power, higher power. And, but the power, compared to what we have now, is still puny. You know, in a, it was in a regime of 10 to... Uh, to 10 to the 8 watt per square centimeters, okay? Uh, <clears throat> or I should say, the intensity, I should hear this, this plot here shows the intensity, which is the power per square centimeters. And uh, so in 1960, we immediately, we start to be in a new world, okay? was fascinating because we, can, we could really get, you know, um, high, high intensities. And we had the new techniques which appeared. We had the Q switching appearing. Uh, we had the mod locking. And uh, so every time we were improving the intensity, you know, by some time. And then, but then we stopped at one point we start to <clears throat> increase the intensity, 10 to the 12 or so, okay? And we had, for about 20 years, a big plateau, you know, where, you know, the intensity was not increased. So, <clears throat> so we had to, uh, so this plateau, uh, you know, was uh, stopped, at, in 1995 
or 85, I'm sorry, 1985, where we came up with a new concept in lasers, which was called CPA for chirp pulse amplification. Some people in the state say, you know, it's, it's CPA means certified public accounting, okay? <laughs> uh, but uh, for us in optics, it's chirp pulse amplification as you are going to see it. And so we started to do some experiment and so on, and I will describe some of them. So, uh, but after the CPA, and I will show you how it works, you know, the intensity started to climb and climb and climb. And of course, every time when we were changing the intensity, new applications, you know, were demonstrated. So I'm going to demonstrate, to show you that. First, I mean, this part in, uh, you know, in purple, you see uh, intensity, with intensity at 10 to the 15 and so on. That's the domain where uh, uh, very, very important applications were demonstrated, for instance, in eye surgery, okay? Uh, very important, and also in micro-machining, because you, we discovered that with this, with this very short pulse, in fact, you could remove, you could heat up the material, remove the material very, very precisely. Incredible. So for eye surgery, it was, it was the best scalpel, okay? And micro-machining, you would see that we can be extremely precise in a sub-nanometer sub range, okay? So then um, <clears throat> after that, uh, we, we, um, we had the field of atosecond physics where, of course, Ferenc Krauss and, and Anne Lullier and uh, uh, Peter Agostini Pierre Agostini, you know, got illustrated. And uh, then we uh, saw uh, new applications. Then uh, we come to regime in green where the intensity is becoming very, very high. And the intensity uh, this time becomes novel in the sense that, you know, a light we know that light is an electromagnetic wave, okay? Where the electric field and the magnetic field are orthogonal, orthogonal also to the propagation axis, okay? And, but there's one thing which was uh, happening, is the fact that now the mass of electrons or the the, the, when, when the light, you know, is focused on, you shine the light to, to a target, then what you are doing is the reason why you are seeing, of course, uh, the target is the fact that the electric field, you know, is, is um, activa activates the electrons around the nucleus of the atoms, okay? But the motion of the electrons is transverse, transverse to the propagation axis. This is one thing. But also, uh, the motions, the velocity of the electrons going up and down, yeah, because the field goes like this, is, it's not very fast, okay? It's, it's, it's relatively slow to the speed of light. But when we are coming to this uh, regime where we are at 10 to the 17, 10 to the 18, this is not the case anymore. And the electrons under the field of the laser now, because the field is, becomes very large, the electron now moves up and down, you know, at the velocity of light. And what, and so the electrons 
becomes relativistic under the action of the light. This was, uh, this was the first time that we could observe this. And of course, that is going to change completely the field of optics. Um, so, and so this is what we call relativistic optics, because, of course, uh, the light goes at relativistic speed. But when we say relativistic op op optics, we we think about the electron jiggling around the nucleus, okay, and jiggling at the speed of light, okay. And of course, this was really a very, very novel, of course. And you will see that the applications that we can do with that. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah. So now if I push, the, uh, the um, intensity, and I will, will show you next, next how I, I do that. Be uh, <clears throat> then we go into a regime where it's about 10 to the 22 uh, watt or so per square centimeters, where now um, <clears throat> is a regime, I would say, of ultra relativistic optics. These times, in this regime, you have also the protons, which is two, about 2,000 times more massive than the electrons, which is now okay, moving at the speed of light. And we call that ultra-relativistic. Uh, what, what is exciting now is that we are now always working, you know, trying to improve the intensity in order to, because every time we can increase the intensity, we can, we are facing new, uh, new regime in physics. And uh, now when we are uh, going in this regime, in a, a regime where it would be about 10 to 29 or so watt per square centimeter, then this something different, this is going, going to happen. What you're, is going, is happening is a regime where we are going to materialize light. Light will be, be will becomes protons, um, sorry, electrons, and, um, um, and so we will, uh, uh, and positrons, uh, so we will materialize light, okay? And that is uh, something which is very, very exciting. I mean, we, most of the lab, you know, now in the world are trying to get into the regime, notably the, uh, the extreme light facility, you know, in Romania. Uh, <clears throat> and um, Hungary and Czechy. Uh, they want, we all want to go into this regime, fascinating regime where we materialize the light, okay? And uh, <clears throat> so, so this is, uh, you know, uh, so now, uh, the reason why, you know, we had the problems, you know, we had this plateau, so I'm coming back now, we have this plateau here. The reason was because um, if we had if the laser exhibited, yeah, exhibits, you know, some non-uniformity, you know, usually, I mean, the, the ideal pulse is uh, Gaussian, but you can have special modulations, you know, on the top of these Gaussians. And um, because the index of refractions, you know, is because at these very high intensities, uh, the index of refraction becomes a function of the intensity, okay? This, so this is a very new, new, new regime, uh, as I said. So you have this, the index of refraction, which is constant, you know, uh, in normally, in a normal world, okay? Then uh, is, is, a, is a function of the in, uh, intensity. We have n naught plus N2i. 
okay? And um, because of we have this end to white, this is going to cause a lot of problems because it will be responsible for uh, the filamentations when the light will propagate into this amplifier, will propagate, it will form filaments, okay? And hot filaments. So you are going to have sure you have, uh, intensity, you know? And these high intensities you know, are going really to damage the materials. And so, so in this is what you see in this piece of glass here, you see the track. The tracks have been really uh, produced by this sur, sur intensity, by the fact that uh, the intensity now is very high, they are very filament, hot spot, you know. And um, <clears throat> so that was a problem, and that, that was the reason why, you know, we were stuck at 10 to the 15. Uh, at, or 10 to the 12 watt or so per square centimeters. And um, so now uh, uh, we discovered a way, okay, where we could get around this problem, okay? So when we want to, to uh, produce very short and intense pulse, we start with short pulses. Short pulses which are produced by an oscillator. Okay, this oscillator so now produce short pulses, and you see the pulse is composed on uh, on a few optical cycles because we are in a very short pulse regime. Um, in a visible, um, <clears throat> the period of light is in a regime of ten uh, of femtoseconds. Okay, femtoseconds. And of course, uh, you have uh, the wavelength will be uh, um, the, to, um, with the period of light times the velocity. So here we have the pulse, which is come produced by an oscillator. And these pulses now, instead of taking this pulse, and as we were doing before, uh, trying to amplify it, by an amplifier, this time we, we don't do that because we know that otherwise it's going to be catastrophic for the expensive uh, amplifier here yeah, that we are going to screw up. And so the pulse is going to be, in fact, what we are going to do, we are going to elongate the pulse, okay? Stretch the pulse and the, well, so, so by stretching the pulse, we are going to decrease the intensity. And this is what we do with this pair of gratings, these grating pairs, okay? So you see that now this pulse is, is a, and the spectrum, when you stretch the pulse, the spray spectrum, overall spectrum doesn't change. The temporal, the temporal uh, of course, uh, shape, of the pulse change a lot. So here you have this pulse which is stretched, okay? And um, which has this, exactly the same energy than this one because we are careful to, to use gratings which are, you know, uh, efficient gratings. So without, so we can stretch the pulse without changing the intensity, you know, uh, notably. So we have a pulse here, which has exactly the same frequency contents of the input pulse, exactly the same, and roughly, uh, energy content of the uh, input pulse. Then, but it's, it's longer, okay? So the intensity of this pulse is much, much lower. So now we can go and amplify this pulse and, um, the amplification uh, is going to be done by these amplifiers. And the amplifiers, you know, uh, will only see a moderate intensity, so you are not going to damage it, uh, like you do 
if you don't do that, if you don't do this stretching. Then when the pulse, when we, this pulse has extracted the energy from the amplifiers, then we are going to, and so you see that it has been stretched here, and you are going to recombine it, you know, by doing just a converse of what we did, by uh, using a set of gratings, which is really now going to put the pulse back uh, where it was in terms of pulse duration and shape and so on. So now we have a pulse which is more, much more intense, much more intense. Typically, we increase the intensity by a factor of thousands, okay? We stretch the pulse by, by a factor of thousands and we increase the intensity by a factor of thousands, okay? And here we go. And that's the reason why we were able really to defeat these problems we had, uh, you know, uh, with, with this plateau, we couldn't go above that, that level. And so now um, all the systems, you know, high intensity systems, uh, laser, you know, are using these techniques. And so now let's see about the application because now we are, you know, we, are, we have the capability to produce much, much higher intensity. So what are going to be the applications? One application uh, is, um, as I said, you go into this regime now of relativistic. Now the electrons uh, are going to move around the nucleus, but at velocity, at, a, at, a, uh, at velocity uh, higher than the speed of, uh, at the velocity uh, close to the speed of light, not higher, but at the, close to, yeah, like I, I mentioned here. Okay, so, <clears throat> and so you will see now the applications. One of the very important applications is that we are going to be able with this pulse, which is very, very high intensity, try to produce a plasma wave, you know. Uh, <clears throat> when we are going to excite, as I'm going to show you, and, and this plasma wave is going to be like, uh, you know, uh, what we see, you know, on the beach, where you see, uh, you see the, the wave and you see surfer, you know. Uh, surfing the, um, the waves. And, uh, so, and so he, he, uh, this wave now is going to accelerate the surfer. And here the surfer are going to be our electrons. The electrons are going to be trapped in this wave and going to be accelerated at, at a relativistic speed. But this time with a very high Lorentz uh, factor. Okay, here, here is the experiment. We have a, a very high intensity pulse that I'm producing now, you know, with the CPA technique. And we shoot the pulse into a noble gas, okay? And we are going to produce a plasma here. You see here we have the plasma wave and we see the electrons trapped in the plasma wave, okay? And um, these electrons are going to be dragged by, uh, by this plasma wave going at the speed of light. And they will be, all these electrons are going to be accelerated. And this time, you know, uh, the acceleration, what is fabulous about this technique, which has been invented by our friend Tajima and Darson, his advisor, um, and uh, what is remarkable of this, uh, this uh, technique is that it's a very compact technique and we will be able really to accelerate electrons to very high energy, you know, uh, in a tune of GeV per centimeters, okay? giga electron volt 
per centimeter, you know. Um, so this is remarkable because if you want to do that with a conven conventional technology, okay, so you see I show you uh, a centimeter with a centimeter of plasma, you know, activated by this high intensity pulse, you can produce electrons with energy in a tree, uh, in this case here is uh, uh, GeV, 3 GeV. This is a case of this uh, synchrotron Soleil, which is on the plateau of Palaiso in, uh, in uh, near Paris. And, but you see, uh, this, the size of this uh, uh, synchrotron is not centimeters, it's kilometers, okay? It has about a kilometer difference. And, and it's about GeV, like what we are able to produce now. So this already, you see that these incredible applications, where well, now you are re going to reduce the size of synchrotrons to, uh, uh, from kilometers to centimeters, okay? And as you can imagine, you will also decrease the size, the cost, enormously. So this represents really incredible applications, very important applications, which appears, as I said, in this year, we are in the green area, okay? So this is an important application. And, but now we will try to do better than that. I'll show you that we can do giga electron volt per centimeter. But, you know, we are never satisfied, right? We are always trying to go higher. So what we would like really to do is to go much higher now. Not in a, staying in a giga electron volt, but we are going after tera electron volt. Okay. Tera electron volt machine is these machines that exist at CERN where this, the ring, you know, is 27 kilometers. And now you are going to see that we would like really to bring the size of certain type systems to the centimeters as well. And you are going to see how we do that. Um, in, in order to get, as I say, I need, if I want to get more uh, gradients, acceleration to gradients, I need now to get a shorter and more intense pulse. How do you do that? You are going to see that we are going to uh, amplify the short pulse. So you see that we can, now what we are going to do, we are going to compress the pulse. Because I told you, we, uh, there's two ways. If you want to have more intensities, there is two ways to do it. Either you increase the energy, keeping the pulse duration the same, or you compress the pulse. So typically, the oscillators, you know, is providing a pulse about 20 femtoseconds, okay? A femtosecond is 10 minus 15 seconds, okay? is a billionth of a millionth of a second, okay? So it's very short. And it's composed, the pulse typically is composed of two cycles, typically 10 cycles also, okay? So that gives you a pulse about 20 times to a second. And, you know, if you want to compress it, uh, you are limited by, by the, you, you, you will compress it until the single cycle, okay? If I want now to increase the intensity, I, have to, I want to shorten the pulse, okay? To the, say, single cycle, okay? And, but that's not going to be enough for us. We want to go, because a single cycle is a two femtosecond, okay? Two femtosecond is still a long pulse for us for what we want to do, because we want to go very, very high in intensity. Two frames to second is not enough. So I will show you that we have two stages. 
we are going to first to compress the pulse with one technique, which is going to take the pulse from 20 femtosecond to 2 femtosecond. And then, because it's not enough, we will compress this pulse now by another factor of 1,000, something like this. So we will go from the femtosecond to the attoseconds and below. And, you know, of course, and we will increase the intensity. So this is an, what we are going to, to talk about now. Um, so I'm going to be to go quickly, okay, because you are, this are to be uh, uh, pretty technical. So this, this graph uh, shows the energy of the pulse and the pulse durations of, as a function of years. You know, and uh, uh, we stayed at, um, uh, you know, in 85 or so, pulses, the shortest pulse we could produce was um, in a femtosecond, single femtosecond regime. And this was also produced by, in fact, by, uh, by um, Ferenc Krauss, okay, the team of Fer Ferenc Krauss and Zelto and so on at, uh, in Milano, okay? So we first produced the pulses at, uh, at single femtosecond, and then um, <clears throat> we stayed this way at the single femtosecond for uh, another 20 years, and now what we want try to do is to uh, go much higher in uh, much shorter in energy. Oh, okay, and pulse durations. This is what, and what uh, we are using to do that for the people, for the specialists uh, in, in the audience, uh, we are using uh, uh, because we need to 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 compress the pulse. We need to make it shorter. Okay, if you remember the Fourier optics, if you make it shorter. You have to have the pulse has to have a broader bandwidth, okay? And so you have to enlarge the bandwidth of your pulse. How can you do that? Well, you can use the fact that the index of refraction is a function of the intensity, you know, as, as we have seen. And uh, so if I shine the light on the piece of materials which is uh, the index of refraction varies with the intensity, then, you know, as the pulse, you know, the, the intensity of the pulse goes like this, you know, so, so the index of refraction is going to do the same. And what you are going to do, you are going to uh, modulate the phase of the pulse. And with this modulation, you are going to use it to compress the pulse. Okay. So this is um, this. And uh, so uh, I'm going to go in. And what we are using, we are using these plates, these, uh, <clears throat> these glass plates, you know, flat glass plates. And when you have a, a high energy pulse, this is what we are using for, for in this kind of experiment. You have the poles are what we call flat top. They are not Gaussians like uh, for short poles normally. They are flat top. So we can we will be able already to produce shorter poles over a large area in smooth area, and that is nice because we will be able now really to make a, although, I mean, the pulse will be flat top, but we'll have uh, shorter pulses because the bandwidth will be larger. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but that's to give you the idea. We start with a pulse at 25 femtosecond, and the, uh, the pulse now goes into if a plate, 
a millimeter size, millimeter thick plate, and we can, with this plate, uh, produce now not our surface modulation around uh, this whole area. And then once we have this surface of modulations, we can compress then the pulse to maybe five femtoseconds. And uh, because five femtoseconds is not enough, what we will do is to compress the pulse again with a second stage using the same technique. Uh, so you see that we have, uh, we have this pulse. We start with uh, 25 femtoseconds, uh, you see. Uh, and then in red, we have a 5 femtosecond, and then in blue, we have a 2 femtosecond. Okay. So this is really um, very nice because we will be able right, to make now much shorter pulses. Now, they're shorter, but they are not enough for us. You know, I mean, really, like you're a scientist, you know, a lot of time you're never never uh, happy, you know, you always uh, want right, to have something uh, to reach beyond uh, the normal things. And so, uh, so after two femtoseconds, if you have two femtoseconds, we would like to have at least something a thousand times shorter. And how can you do that? Well, then we are using a new technique, which is called relativistic compression. Okay, where we have uh, the, the single pulse, you see the, the one the, in, in yellow, this single pulse is a pulse which has been produced by the technique I just described. Okay, and <clears throat> so this pulse now, so it's two femtosecond, you know, it's very intense, okay. Um, the intensity uh, of this pulse is very large, and then it will be focused on this uh, target. The target is made of electrons and, and protons, okay? And ions, very, very heavy. So what you are going to, the light is going to push forward the, um, <coughs> the electrons, okay? By ponderative, ponderomotive force, what you call. And, uh, and then um, the electron is going to move and attract behind them the protons, which is uh, more massive. And so you see that you have, you, you, what you are doing is you have the electrons, you are making a kind of a mirror, a new mirror, okay? And this is coming, it's very interesting. You have, you have this new mirror, you know, because you, you have the electrons which are being pushed, and behind you have the, the, the protons. So you have negative part, neg negative um, uh, uh, um, particles, and you have positive particles, so you are setting up a huge gradient, okay? And this, and, and, but you do that at the speed of light, okay? And, you know, because you're pushing, you know, uh, this, uh, this, uh, these electrons, you know, and at the speed of light. And, and so you are, in fact, you are setting up a very large field, okay? And this large field is going now also to move the electron back at, so, so the, the electron, this mirror, is going to be moved at the speed of light. So it's like, you know, you have a mirror, you know, and this mirror is moving toward you at the speed of light, okay? And if that happens, of course, uh, what going to, uh, is, is, uh, you are going to, this is going to lead to a compression, this, the, the reflected light is going to be, in fact, compressed. And it's going to be compressed by a very large Lorentz factors. It depends, of course, of the intensity you are working on, but 
in our case, is compressed by a factor of 1,000. Okay, very large factors. And so here, you have, you see that you have compressed the pulse uh, by a large amount, which is going to the atosecond. And, um, and the, the compression factor is, of course, of a function of the intensity of your pulse. And, uh, and, and now it's not only at a second, but it's zeptosecond. Zeptosecond is 10 to the tw uh, 20 minus 21, okay? So, uh, so now, you see, uh, of course, this is, this is, uh, have not been right now demonstrated uh, uh, in the lab, but these are the result of simulations where you can produce now zeptosecond pulses. Is it, the zeptosecond is very, in, okay, what is nice about zeptosecond is composed of, in fact, of gamma radiations, okay? A gamma radiations, the, the cycle is in zeptosecond regime, okay? So what you have done is, you have made the way, what we have done is we made very, very short pulses in a zeptosecond regime and also in a spectral domain in the X-ray, gamma ray regime. And of course, this is completely novel, okay, and very, very important. And why do we want to do that? I'm going to show you why you want to do that and what you could do with that is that this time, you know, I show you the, uh, the um, acceleration by wake field acceleration. But the acceleration by wake field acceleration was done in gas, right? We had this gas jet where we are focusing the lasers and we were making this plasma wave which was accelerating our electrons. Now, because I have X-ray and gamma ray radiations, I'm going to change my uh, gas jet by solid. And that is, is going to be extremely uh, important because the accelerations that we are producing by, by uh, wake field acceleration is a function of it goes with the square root of uh, the electron density, okay? So you see, uh, here, uh, with, before, when we are only using visible light, this, gamma, this um, gas jet was in a 10 to the 18 electron per, per uh, cubic centimeter. Now we are talking about 10 to the 20 uh, six, in fact, no, 20, 10, 10, 10 to, I'm sorry, 10 to the 23, 10 to the 24 electron per, per uh, cubic centimeter. So this, you are, we are going to get a gain, you know, in accelerating radians of a thousand times. And that, of course, is, 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 uh, is remarkable because now I'm showing you uh, here I'm showing the tera electron volt um, accelerators, you know, which exist now at CERN. Okay, you have this tera electron volt is 27 kilometers, right, in in uh, in circumference. The reason why is 27 kilometers is because the radiations that we are using, you know, for this wake field accelerations. It's microwave, 10 to the 9 Hertz, okay? Now, if I'm using visible light, visible light is 10 to the 14 Hertz. So this time, you see that you see, you go from 27 kilometers to about 100 meters, okay? And now, that is by, because we are using the, um, 
the visible light. Uh, and now, of course, if we're using X-rays, I have another fa factor of 1,000. And this time, we hope to produce this tera electron volt over one centimeter. OK. And now, of course, uh, you open a new field of regime. And uh, you see, tera electron volt particles exist, but they exist, they are in cosmos. So if you want really to do uh, some work in cosmic rays and so on, this is, uh, you have to, you know, uh, your lab, laboratory is going to sit in a cosmos. But if we can produce them, you know, on a, on, uh, in a lab, you know, this is an enormous advantage. Okay. And uh, so that is one of the applications. Uh, so producing cosmic rays in the laboratories. So it's a way really to, to produce the cosmos in a laboratory, you know. OK, now, um, what next? Yeah, so you see that what we have done, you know, with this very short pulse and so on, we move optics from the electron volt regime, OK, uh, where the typical energy is electron volt, you know, in optics, to the tera electron volt regime, OK? So, it's an, so optics now covers a range from the atomic physics to the subatomic physics, OK? And this is because we are able, really, to produce very, very short and intense pulses. Uh, now, uh, applications. OK, they are, they are very exciting. Uh, applications, you know, is we can produce, because we, we have these very high intensity pulses in an X-ray gamma ray regime. And um, so we, if we focus these beams, then what we will be able really to produce are going to, uh, if we, I put a specimen, a thin specimen, a target, you know, which is composed of electrons and protons and so on, then with my ultra high intensity pulse, I'm going to go and push the electron forward. The electrons, they are negative, they are going to attract behind the protons, okay? And you are going really to, to produce a very nice uh, set of, uh, setup of protons. And when we have a protons, so here are the, some of the results from the, uh, you see that uh, we can, um, here again, what is remarkable, okay, if you want this proton, by the way, this proton are in, in a, um, a GeV regime, okay, so they are relativistic protons. And if you want really to do, to produce relativistic protons, you know, this is a type, a type of machines that you have to produce, okay? It's a kilometer long machine. It's called Mira Project. And so, and this is what you produce. You are producing GeV, uh, or fraction of GeV uh, protons, okay? Now, of course, uh, with our little gadget, small gadget, you know, with our laser, which is, can table tap, we, are, we have the potential to produce um, now uh, protons in a GeV uh, regime. And uh, once you have a proton in a GeV regime, what you can do is you can produce uh, uh, neutrons. Okay? Uh, it's easy if you shoot the, the protons into um, uh, uh, some targets by spallations, okay, you can produce neutrons. So you have a source of protons, you have a source of neutrons, and you, are, you can really, now you revolutionize, I mean, you have now a new tool, you know, in uh, atomic physics, a new source in atomic physics. Uh, and <clears throat> so now you have, you have new, New, uh, new radiations, and you can have uh, 
So you know how to produce protons, uh, uh, and you can do proton therapy, hopefully, uh, with the type of uh, laser I showed you. Uh, we can do nuclear therapy, we can do nuclear diagnostics, okay? Very, but with very compact system. You see the problem? You know, uh, the reason that we, it's very difficult to get, uh, you know, proton therapy is really a therapy of choice, okay? Uh, for uh, curing cancer. The reason why we don't, we don't really have more people uh, using that is because of cost, okay? Because the system is very, very big and very costly. Now with our small, we have been we are able now to reduce the size of these um, uh, of these um, accelerators. Then we can uh, now offer, you know, uh, uh, treatments which are going to be much more um, uh, cheaper. Okay. Uh, the other thing is the other big applications because we have our neutrons. Now, and uh, is we can really try to uh, uh, treat uh, nuclear waste, okay? You know that uh, we, of course, and I'm going to talk also about thorium, but uh, we know how with, you know, nuclear energy is good, of course, to produce uh, um, uh, energy. Uh, <clears throat> For our society, of course, and uh, but we are going to see that we can now with the lasers we can produce uh, uh, um, uh, energy, you know, with um, with this technology. Now, just quickly, I want to remind you that um, if uh, here I, you, you have a gigawatt a gigawatt um, power plant, okay. Um, a gigawatt power plant is produ producing 8 billion kilowatt hours per year. But if you want to have this 8 billion kilowatt hour per year, you have really, uh, each year, we have to uh, furnish or to provide um, uh, coal, uh, coming from Android trains of Android wagon. And of course, you are producing tons or kilometer cube of carbon dioxide. Now, uh, this is for a uh, thermal power plant. Now, if you are using <coughs> atomic power plant, then uh, you need for, to produce this gigawatt power, uh, then you, this 8 billion kilowatt hours per year, you need 300 tons of uranium, okay? And, and this uranium is nice because it's a, you know, there's no carbon dioxide, okay? And, <clears throat> but if you are using, this time, if you don't use uranium, but you are using thorium, then you only need one ton of thorium. And <coughs> thorium, there is plenty of thorium, okay, in the world. Uh, now, the problem is when you are producing your energy, you know, then you are using your neutrons because you are doing fission. Okay, we don't know how to do fusion yet, so, but, so we have to do fissions. And um, so we are <coughs> shooting neutrons, high energy neutrons, into, into uh, 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 uranium, so now uh, thorium. And <coughs> so you can fracture, you know, uh, you can fission these materials and produce energy. But the problem is uh, sometimes what you are doing, you are putting a neutron into, the, uh, one neutron is being absorbed 
by the by uh, the nucleus, and you are making new elements, what we call that transuranian element, elements, which are called actinide, minor actinide. And these minor actinides have their stains, they are really um, nasty, and they, and they last, a uh, uh, lifetime is very long, okay? Uh, so, uh, the idea is to use transmutation. The idea is to use uh, the neutrons that we are producing with the laser to, uh, and with uh, fission, the, uh, this minor actinide, and you are making new, uh, new product, which these times are very, uh, their lifetime is really counted in in very short minutes, hours, this kind of things. So, uh, of course, this is, of course, real. If we could do these transmutation things, you know, it, it, could, it would be extremely uh, along with, if we could do that with the laser and so on, it would be extremely advantageous for society. So, uh, now I'm going, to, I'm going to show, as you can say, I'll show you some of the applications of this very, very short pause, okay? The, the, the other big applications that we have to solve is these problems of space debris. We had debris, we are producing debris in space since 1957, you know, when the... Um, uh, space, space age, you know, started with Gagarin and so on, uh, Sputnik. So, and now we are, the Earth, you know, is surrounded by millions of orbital debris. And so it's, I think it's important to get rid of them because every, these debris, they have the size, can go from millimeter size to um, meter size, of course. And they, 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 they travel at very high speed, you know, 10 times the speed of sound. And so they are very, very dangerous uh, for uh, the equipment, satellites which are around and so on, and for, of course, uh, this is an um, astronaut. So right now, there is about 20 million tons, okay? 20, 20 million, 20, 28,000 tons of, uh, of debris, you know, in the Earth. No, has been, I'm sorry, has been sent into space, okay? And right now, there's about half this represents four Eiffel Tower, okay? Eiffel Tower, one Eiffel Tower is 7,000 tons. So, and we are left with one half Eiffel Towers in space right now, okay? But we need to clean, okay? And uh, so what we are working on now is, uh, is a new type of laser, okay? Because we need we need lasers now, which are um, can provide you know sufficient energy per pulse, of course, but also you have to have a high rep rate, um, and um, this is very important to have high rep rate, uh, and so uh, this is the type of things that we are working on. In order to have high rep rate, um, you, we cannot use rod, you know, because lasers, very often the lasers, you know, are made of rods of amplifi to amplify the light. But now this time we will use fibers. And why fibers? Because if we are putting fibers, a lot of fibers, then we can cool them. Because in order to do the job, we need to have a lot of, to dissipate a lot of energy, 
Okay. Uh, and so we need a new laser. And this, this, this type of laser we, we are uh, constructing right now. So right now, um, of course, what we want to do is when we have a debris, like, like this uh, nut bolt, uh, we, what we want, we don't really want to make an explosion of this debris because we don't want to make more debris. So what we want to do is to shoot the, uh, the laser into the, um, uh, the debris and uh, just, uh, just to create a, 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 a jet, okay? Uh, I mean, to make a small ablations, this ablation is going to produce um, uh, a, um, a jet, I mean, a, a jet, and this jet, you know, by reactions, and, and this jet is going to uh, move, you are going to deorbit the debris, and by deorbiting the debris, one, I mean, the, this, this, this guy, this, um, this um, debris here is going to get into the atmosphere and it will be burned into the atmosphere and, and that's it, okay? So this is that, that is strategy we are thinking, okay, uh, to use, to get rid of this uh, debris. Okay, so what I, I like to say that uh, you know, I, I spent quite some time uh, to tell you what we, about the uh, extreme, these very short pulses, the laser, and why do we want to try to produce very short pulse of laser at high intensity, high web rate, and so on. It's, uh, you know, for very important applications in physics, but also in cosmology and so on. And, and so, uh, once again, you know, we can really produce these pulses, this, this um, extreme light pulse, you know, they produce the largest field, the largest accelerations, the largest temperature and the largest pressures. So it carries for me the best hope and opportunity for the future of science and society. So I was very pleased when I, this year, uh, I heard that Anne Lullier and uh, Ferenc Kraus and uh, P P uh, Pierre uh, 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 Agostini got a Nobel Prize because of this. Thank you very much. I'm going to stop here. Yeah. Okay. So you thank you survive. <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Gerard, yeah. and uh, please take a seat and. Uh, uh -huh. So I'm going to be quizzed now. And now there is actually a, a session where uh, actually the audience can also ask uh, questions. So, uh, but uh, while you are thinking about questions, I think uh, 2023 is a very special year because probably it's, it's unique in the sense that uh, a, a French scientist and Hungarian scientist got the same number of Nobel Prizes. I just realized when you showed the slides. Uh -huh. So it's, not, it's never gonna happen again, uh, probably, uh, in, in, in this way. But uh, I just realized that uh, Pierre Agostini and, and Anne Lullier are both uh, French. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, and uh, on, on, on this note, I'm just wondering, you have, uh, you just told me that you have personal experience with both with, uh, obviously with Ferenc Krauss, uh, but also with Co uh, Katalin Koriko. Oh, yeah. So can, can you just uh, tell this, uh, Katalin, how, how, yeah. how you met her and, uh, ah, I met or, or, or Ferenc? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Ferenc, but see, but see, but see, I know Ferenc for uh, 30 years now, maybe 35, yeah. Uh -huh. And um, yeah, and because I mean we have really been working on very uh, very parallel projects, you know, and so on. So very very very. I mean we had a very nice collaboration, and I work in this lab as well, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, uh, Catalin Carico is a different story. It's because I I, I was. Uh, I, I, 
I, I was in a um, jury, you know, I was in a jury uh, to decide about um, uh, a, a prime, to, to give a big prize, okay? And the biggest prize in terms of money, you know, is not the Nobel Prize. It's, it's, uh, it's um, a Vietnamese prize, which is called Win Future Prize, you know, which gives is three millions, you know. Uh, I was in this, uh, in this jury, and, uh, and um, it was the first time that this prize was, was going to give, be given. Mm -hmm. And of course, it was, exact, it was at the moment where the COVID was really uh, going very full steam ahead. And, um, and so they, she, they announced you know, the vaccines and so on. And of course, it was a no-brainer, you know, to propose her as a mm -hmm. winner of his prize, okay, of the Win Future Prize. And uh, of course, uh, we were expecting also to have for her to be Nobel Prize, of course, mm -hmm. you know. It didn't come uh, until this year, yeah. Mm -hmm. But when I... Uh, I met uh, Catalin, you know, uh, three years ago. I had the chance really to, to, have, mm -hmm. to have a good connection with her. Mm -hmm. She's another one of your... I don't know what you, you do, you know, to pro produce this phenomenal scientist and researcher and so on. But it's amazing, you know. Well, uh, as, as I said, an exceptional year, and I think it has yeah. to do uh, a lot to do with, with uh, education as well. Yeah. So um, I'm just wondering if there's a question at the audience. Uh, just feel free to ask anything. And I was also told that uh, if you would like to ask a question in Hungarian, I would be happy to translate the question. <laughs> so uh, what's love? A, a question in Hungarian, maybe? or English, whichever you prefer. In French too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so all the, okay, yeah, all the great on. plans uh, with uh, laser-induced acceleration of particles, uh, mm -hmm. either in plasmas or in a, or in a solid targets. It's a solid the, also, it's yeah. a solid is yeah, a plasma. Solid targets, yeah. yeah. So it will usually hit like uh, the troubles, uh, the usual troubles with the lasers, like it's stability, uh, like uh, demand of power, and, and uh, right. so so what do you think, like what's this, uh, like uh, in which direction, or what is the, like the technology that should break this uh, paradigm uh, yeah. and then yes. finally we should This, this is the one I, I showed you, uh, the laser fibers, you know, where you gang up, you know, um, uh, hundreds of fibers, they have to be phased, of course, right? Because right now, as you said, all these, all these applications that I showed are really uh, demands a lot of average power. So what you have to do, of course, if you have a lot of average power, this power has to be produ produced you know, very efficiently, right? But, uh, so you, we had to come with a technique which could provide the peak power, the average power, but very efficiently. And the, tec the, the technique uh, that we are, uh, which is uh, uh, based on fibers, okay? Fiber is... Uh, because, I mean, fibers now, you know, is, are produced, uh, uh, you know, the production of fiber is huge. And, but of course, for this application, it's a special type of fiber. So it's not really the fiber that you put in the ground, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's different. But anyway, we know how to fabricate fibers, okay? So in order to, the fibers are good, 
uh, to produce energy, uh, uh, average power, because they have a good uh, the, 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 the area, surface area of the fiber is very large compared to the volumes of your fiber. Okay, so that's good, you know, to cool the fiber. Okay, so if you want to produce very high average power, that's what, that you, have, what you have to do. We know also that fiber are very efficient. Okay, they can be pumped with laser diode, so they can be very efficient. We know that they can be 50% efficient and so on. Uh, uh, normally, lasers are very good, but uh, uh, use the normal type of laser, I would say, you know, are, are very bad in terms of efficiency. Okay, when you talk about laser, you know, uh, Efficient, you have to think about percent efficiency. Except, but fibers. Fibers are much more efficient. So that's the reason why I want fibers to have high efficiency. Okay. I want to have fiber because um, a surface, uh, air, surface area is very large. So I can cool the fiber. And after I know that... Um, yeah, you can you can phase, you can phase fibers, you know you can phase now. Well, I, so we are doing experiment with about 100 fibers, right now, it will be phased, you know, and so that, that's that's not a problem. So this is the reason why, you know, all these applications, you know, especially, you know, if you talk about atomic energy applications, you know, where you have ready to uh, to uh, transmute tons, zillion tons of uh, debris, you know, and this kind of application are going to really, uh, you are going to demand uh, high average power and high efficiency. So this is uh, what we, uh, so I, I think we have the key. I mean, uh, we, we are working on this, and uh, I think we'll be success successful. Yeah. So since uh, time yes. is time is flying, and uh, Professor Muru has some uh, no, this question there. important uh, business in, in Sega to do, I just ask uh, you to uh, to ask uh, these two short questions that you might have, and uh, let us uh, start with uh, Professor Crow. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for this exciting talk where you made use of uh, increasing the, the intensity by shortening the path. Mm -hmm. There is another way to do that, to, in, in, to improve focusing, for example, by plasmonic yeah, nanoparticles. Of course. Of course That's yeah. the way what we try to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 of course. No, uh, I, I don't, uh, you know, of course you have to have impeccable beams quality. Okay, not to own in all these applications. So you have, so you can focus the beam. But here again, uh, focusing the beam, now we can do it beautifully because we have all these um, mirrors, you know, adaptive optics and coming. And uh, so it's, uh, I think focusing the beam was not a big problem. The problem is to produce uh, uh, light with high av average power and with high efficiency because the laser doesn't like that. It doesn't like to produce uh, <clears throat> high efficiency light, you know. Uh, yeah. But that means focusing below the diffraction limit. Oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. We need absolutely that. In all these applications, diffraction limits is a must. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and I think the last question of this evening oh. will be uh, formulated. So, uh, my question is about this, uh, this relativistic compression. Uh, then, uh, if I uh, think well, then, then uh, you have this light pass, and, it, uh, and so the, uh, the system, it's, it's a solid system, no? It's a solid material. Yeah. So in the same. solid material, the electrons uh, 
uh, the light pushes the electrons one way, and then it it it, it comes it becomes like a, like a spring, so it has to dampen. No, so the the electrons uh, return to their places, but but there is a um, a kind of oscillating because. Yeah, and this so, is the plasma frequency, the oscillation you are talking so, about. So uh, does it yeah. does it have a limit on the throughput of the system? Like how many impulses can you uh, can you um, um, radiate through the system? You know, because there's a time for dampening this whole mm -hmm. uh, system to uh, to start the new pulse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, this is questions of, uh, I was mentioning that you have to cool mm. uh, the material, right? Uh, I'm not talking about the plasma frequency now of the material, but I mean, if you want to cool it, then that's the reason why we have to increase the area and the reason why we like the fib to use fibers and you need to gang up the fibers if you want to have high average power. But you can do that. Mm -hmm. There's no question about that. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we know how to do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah? No? So okay. with, with this, I would like to thank you, Professor Moro, for, the, for, the, uh, for these fascinating applications of, of uh, intense lasers. I think that's a very interesting topic. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, very importantly, it, it also enabled uh, the emergence of attosecond science uh, in, in, in the 90s and, and uh, in, mm -hmm. in the new millennium as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much again. It, it has been a great pleasure to have you in, in Budapest. And uh, I just wish you a very nice stay in Hungary for the rest of it in Szeged, actually. In, in few hours. <laughs> in, a, in a few hours you will be in Szeged. So thank you very yeah. much. And do not hesitate, you know, to get my, my mail and to get in touch with me if you are interested, you know, by... Uh, okay. I just wanted to show how fascinating, you know, the field of laser is, you know. What you can do with light now is amazing, you know. You know, since I started in... A, I started to do research in 1917, uh, 16, uh, 68, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, in the laser, you know, it uh, was exciting, this ride mm -hmm. stayed, you know, it was exciting all the way, you know, it was 50 years ago, and it was really, uh, it's still, it's still uh, very exciting. Well, the evolution so. of lasers has been uh, amazing, as yeah, you have evolution shown us. of yeah. lasers and the applications Mm -hmm. New application of lasers, you know, which is phenomenal uh, in, in the medical world also. I didn't talk too much about that, but it was uh, mm -hmm. also great, yeah. So, so you know, I think uh, you are very lucky. I mean, I see most of you are really young people. Yeah, so just feel free to contact Professor Muru, as you heard, and uh, thank you very much. It has been okay. very thank impressive. Thank you very much. Ah.